church we have our only stained glass window in memory of St. Bartholomew and always St. Bartholomew is shown with the knife and the scriptures in this window he is cradling St. Bartholomew's church itself so a wonderful way of conflating those two ideas he is holding us The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and welcome to St. Bartholomew's in Ottawa and welcome as well to all of, those, all of you who are worshiping with us from St. Matthew's this August. We celebrate today St. Bartholomew Day, our patron saint and St. Bartholomew's day is the 24th, and so we are two days early. But it's an important date in our history. In 1867, on this date, or that is on the 24th of August, this church was signed into being, if you will. It was officially recognized by the bishop of the time as a, as a church, a congregation that was independent in the sense of it wasn't attached to any other church, just the diocese. And so that was a famous day. And nobody really knows why St. Bartholomew was chosen for this church. Was it just the nearest saint day? Or did someone have a special affection for it? One of those questions we'll never know and I often think of. We are singing a hymn this morning about St. Bartholomew that I don't think you will have heard. It comes from the 19th century by John Ellerton, a famous hymn writer. Most famous hymn he wrote was The Day Thou Gavest Now Is Ending. And he wrote this hymn about St. Bartholomew. And it opens with King of Saints. It's addressed to, well, is King of Saints Jesus or God or a bit of both? King of Saints looking at all the saints, and then it moves into speaking about Bartholomew, of whom we know very, very little. And then in the third verse, it says, was it you who was under the fig tree? And this is a reference to the commonly accepted understanding that Nathaniel has encountered in the John's Gospel and Bartholomew are the same person. Bartholomew's name appears in all the other three Gospels, but 
not in John, but Nathaniel, looks to be who he is. And Bar, Bar Tholomew would mean son of Ptolemy. Anyway, it's a wonderful hymn sung to a tune we all know. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who gave to your Apostle Bartholomew grace to believe and preach your word, may your church truly love what he believed and faithfully preach what he taught. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. For I think that God has shown us as apostles, as last of all, as though sentenced to death, because we've become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to mortals. We're fools for the sake of Christ. We're weak, but you're strong. You are held in honor, but we are held in disrepute. To the present hour, we're hungry and thirsty 
we are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless, and we grow weary of the work of our own hands. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we speak kindly. We have become like the rubbish of the world, the dregs of all things to this very day. I'm not writing this to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you might have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. Indeed, in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. At the laying of the cornerstone of our church in 1868, after the stone was laid, this hymn was said, unless the Lord build this house. And we listen to it now and please sing along with the refrain. Happy are they who fear the Lord. Happy are they who fear the Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house, their labor is in vain who build it. Unless the Lord watches over the city, in vain the watchman keeps his vigil. It is in vain that you rise so early and go to bed so late. Vain too to eat the bread of toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Happy are they who fear the Lord. Children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is a gift. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he contends with his enemies in the gate. Happy are they who fear the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Peter found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of Christ. Thank you. 
I speak in the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Amen. St. Bartholomew's, our patron saint, always comes at an inconvenient time, let's face it, in parish life. The 24th of August. I admire or I am envious of you at St. Matthew's who have a patron saint whose saint's day is September 21st. Just the perfect time to get people excited about the parish, re-energized as the fall starts. But St. Bartholomew is a different kind of saint than Matthew, and we know so very little about him. He appears in the three first Gospels as Bartholomew, one of the Twelve Apostles, no question about that. But he doesn't appear in John. But most people agree that Nathaniel, friend of Philip's, who called Nathaniel to Jesus, that Nathaniel is Bartholomew. And Bartholomew was at some key moments. He would have been, of course, with the disciples at the crucifixion. But we know for certain he met Jesus in the risen state when he was on the shore of the Sea of Galilee and called the disciples and fed them fish and ate fish himself. He, he saw Jesus in the risen state. He, with the other disciples, understood that they never got Jesus before his crucifixion and resurrection. They always thought he was someone that was going to be a ruler like King David and would put down the mighty with force and revenge. And yet Jesus, of course, wasn't that. They couldn't see it. But in the light of the resurrection, they started to understand. And we know that Bartholomew was there at the Ascension when Jesus went to heaven. And that Ascension really means that heaven and earth are really joined together. So he understood that, Nathaniel Bartholomew. And then we don't know anything more about him. However, legends persist, and I think legends have to have some kind of truth to them. It is said that he went east and ended up in India, and the early church historian Eusebius said that he, Bartholomew, had left a gospel of Matthew in India, and evangelization started with this news, and that was what Bartholomew did, and always in the crests of Bartholomew, you see the scriptures there. They meant something, and he took them to the world. On his way back in Armenia, modern-day Armenia, he was able to convert the king. However, he was martyred there. He died in a terrible death. But his witness, his martyrdom, made such an impact that he became their patron saint. And indeed, in the early 20th century, when the genocide of Armenia came, his example gave strength to many and still does. So we have a saint who did these things, but we can't say for sure. And the hymn we sang earlier implied that that was maybe a good thing. We don't know a lot, and there's a lot we don't know about what God does in the world that's hidden to our eyes. And with the eyes of faith, we can perhaps try to plumb them or imagine, or even better, take the kind of energy that Bartholomew brought to the world and channel it into ourselves and into our community. Well, one of the things that we need to do, of course, is figure out how we are going to get back to normal or something like normal in the coming months. We, don't, we thought we were out of the woods or mostly out of the woods earlier, 
in the summer and now the Delta has come to town and we're not so sure anymore. At the same time, it's been a long time and is this going to be chronic? Are we going to be faced with this forever and simply have to learn to live with it and all the anxieties that entails? These are all questions that we have and so when we begin to come back starting next week, each of you will have to answer, answer that question for yourselves and I certainly respect anyone who is reticent but I know that many of you would like to come back as well. So we'll start next week and see how things go. You can rest assured that our diocese will monitor the situation and we will always err on the side of safety. So next week we begin, and I know St. Matthew's will begin shortly after that with distanced and mask worship for those who can come. This week, I went to the Beyond Van Gogh show at the Aberdeen Pavilion. It's a wonderful light show, uh, sound and light and music uh, of Van Gogh's paintings projected on walls in huge vistas. And it's all enveloping. You're in the dark and it's flashing and immersive, as they say. The reviews on this are either very hot or very cold. I tend to be on the very hot side. I just thought it was wonderful. And you know, we're talking about saints. And Van Gogh is surely a great saint. Here's what Henry Nouwen, one of our great theologians, a Roman Catholic from Netherlands, but he lived and died in Canada just recently. He wrote when he taught at Yale Divinity School, I taught several seminars on the ministry of Vincent van Gogh. There is no doubt in my mind that these seminars had a much more profound effect on my students than any other seminar or course I taught. I've never found students to be more personally, intellectually, and emotionally involved than they were during the periods of attentive looking at Vincent's drawings and painting. That Vincent's God, so real, so direct, so visible in nature and people, so intensely compassionate, so weak and vulnerable, and so radically loving, was a God we all wanted to come closer to. If God is reality, or God is perceived in reality, it's people like Van Gogh who make us look, make us really see. I was reminded of the other English visionary, William Blake, and he said that in his poem, Auguries of Innocence, to see the world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wildflower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. That's what the great painters do and that's what I think the saints do. They, they see the world as it is, but they see the world charged with the grandeur of God. At the end of the service today, there's some shots from the Van Gogh exhibition, and you'll see at the end of one of them, a little girl who runs into the picture and tries to grab it. That's the kind of thing I think we all need to recover in ourselves. And just in a moment, Another way of thinking about the moment, captured again in music and words, this time by Laura and Tim Piper. They wrote this piece for choir called What I Can. And in a slide you'll see Laura explains the genesis of the work. But the point is that it was written for all of us when we try to think of what we can do in spite of lockdowns or being called kept close to home and there are things we can do and we can find the energy um, the music asks what can what I can what I can and here's one of the lines I like face the fire burning higher out of sight I look inside and find the fight I can I can I can I can we all need 
to realize that that fire consumes but enlivens and enlightens. So we take the energy of the saints, of Bartholomew, of Vincent van Gogh, and of our local composers. Amen.
Today, we pray for the Anglican Church in South America. Our diocese this week prays for us at St. Bartholomew's and our clergy, David, Lorette and Pamela. In peace, let us pray to the God of love, saying, hear our prayer. For the Church, for these parishes of St. Matthew and St. Bartholomew, for the Anglican Church of Canada and the Diocese of Ottawa, for Shane, our Bishop, and for the churches in countries where Christians are persecuted for their faith. God of love, for those in authority, for all who make decisions that affect the well-being of others in Canada, the United States, and around the world. God of love, for peace in the world, especially in Afghanistan, the Holy Land, Myanmar, and other troubled countries and regions. God of love, for the city of Ottawa and the Outaouais, for the new school year, for students of all ages, and for their teachers and parents. God of love, for those suffering from natural disasters, fire and drought in Canada and the US, and especially the people of Haiti suffering through another earthquake and subsequent flooding, for extreme weather throughout the world. For those suffering from the pandemic, for all who labour in our healthcare system. God of love. For the sick and those in need. At St. Matthew's, Emma, Malachi, Mary Bridget, Virginia, Peter, Becky, Lilia, Arthur, Anne, Derek, Isabel, Grace, Toros, Yolande, Jan, uh, Margie, Michael, Ross, Dawn, Catherine, Judy and family. At St. Bartholomew's for Joanne, Francis, Andre, Harriet, Dawn, Christina, Hannah and family, Harriet and family. As well as others we mention aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of love, for the recently departed, remembering especially those who have died in Haiti. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. For the many blessings of this life, naming them aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of love, these things, good Lord, that your servants have prayed for, give us grace to work for, and in the purpose of your love, answer our prayers and fulfil our hopes. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And now, as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In 1873, the mortgage for St. Bartholomew's had just been paid off. And so the church was consecrated. And that at that service, this hymn was sung, We Love This Place, O Lord. And our choir recorded this on a CD a few years ago. And so we listened to them sing and look at some images of people in our church today. And it'll give you an idea that there is such a thing as a church that isn't empty and that has people in it and gives us something to hope for in the near future. We are
Thank you for worshiping with us today at St. Bartholomew's on our feast day. And thank you for, to you at St. Matthew's for joining us again. We will be continuing our video service and our joint services with St. Matthew's next week on the 29th. But at the same time, here at St. Bartholomew's, we are going to begin in-person worship at 9.30 on the 29th of August. That's next week. And in order to worship, uh, you need to register, and you'll get an email on Tuesday uh, and a chance to register on Eventbrite as we did before. We still have all the same distancing provisos in place, and masking will be the same. So there's space for about 30 people for our worship at 9.30. And at, on the 5th of September. Now St. Matthew's is hoping to begin live worship on September 5th and you at St. Matthew's will hear more about that through email. But rest assured that uh, the video services will continue as they have been doing. We hope you can join us at the coffee hour after the service at 11.15 and the Zoom coordinates are in the email you all received. And that is, of course, an invitation to both parishes. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, and remain with you and all those whom you love now and always. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.